Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to Megan's World. I am your host, Special K Thoughts, a.k.a. Special K, better known in the world of Twitter. You know, we are going to keep this disclaimer alert short and sweet, baby. Megan's World is a pro Megan Markle and Prince Harry news channel. If you don't like Meghan Markle or Prince Harry, then get the hell off this news channel. Peace out. All right. We have some breaking news. We have some breaking news. I am sure you guys have heard the news that Prince William was diagnosed with COVID-19 way back in April. According to The Sun, a.k.a. British tabloid trash bucket, who got the scoop, by the way, a.k.a. leaked by KP, William caught the COVID-19 way back in April. However, he kept it a secret because he didn't want to alarm the nation after his father, Prince Charles, and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson had already suffered from the virus. Now, reports say that William was treated at home with a team of doctors. Must be nice. Some reports say that there were times when William had difficulties breathing. However, he continued on with his royal duties by doing Zoom calls, and he even delivered food parcels to isolated elderly people that lived locally in the area. That that is such a beautiful thing. Oh, you know, I forgot to mention that Kate and the kiddos, you know, they joined William on his COVID-19 spread-a-thon when they delivered those food parcels to the elderly people. Yeah, you know. You know the elderly people, right? The ones that are most vulnerable to the virus. (laughs) Now, check this out. Some royal rodents were upset about William keeping his COVID-19 diagnosis a secret. No Neck, you guys know No Neck. No Neck Jobson called it a cover-up and he accused Prince William of lying. I mean, he said it with his whole chest and two stomachs. This is what No Neck said. If the palace is prepared to lie about issues as serious as Prince William, second in line to the throne, contracting COVID-19. What else have they lied about when questioned by the press? And why should the media believe any denials going forward? This raises serious Issues. No neck. Jobson. I don't know if it's Jobson or Jobson, but either way, Mr. No neck. Little Ricky. Another rural rodent, a.k.a. Richard Palmer. He stated. If the future king contracts a potentially fatal virus that the entire world is worried about during lockdown and he and those around him cover it up, that raises serious questions about whether we can trust anything he or his advisors say. Okay. Sounds reasonable to me. But you know what? You know, these rural rodents, they are so gullible and they are Past pathetic. <laughs> Lord, now, seriously, Lord knows I can't stand Prince William, okay? But 
Like they say, don't hate the player. Hate the game. In this case, I hate them both. But you know what I'm saying. If this is true, seriously, if, and that's a big if, this is true, William, I mean, he played, he played those rural rodents like a fiddle. They thought Prince William was team royal rodent because he allows, think about it, he allows them access to him and his children. And he leaks everything about his brother, Prince Harry. And he also leaks things about his father, Prince Charles. He does that to boost up his image. Okay. Now, what they don't realize is that the access that Prince William gives these rural rodents, it's very calculating and it's very controlled, manipulated in a narrative that portrays William as this loving husband and father of three, who was responsible, who was honorable, who was dutiful to his country. He controls that. But they don't realize that. He uses them to portray that image. But see, those rural rodents, they don't, they don't, they don't see that. Okay? Now, you have some people saying that William, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. It's his personal business. It's his right to keep his health private. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, what? What? I didn't get the memo. Somebody did not give Special K the memo. Oh, so now rurals, you know, they're allowed privacy? Really? Let me ask you something. Did you know that royals are allowed privacy? Because I sure as hell didn't know. Okay? Oh, (laughs) but when Harry and Meghan wanted to keep the details of Archie's birthday secret, folks were screaming that they had the right, they had the right to know about Archie's birth. And why were they screaming that? Why? What was the excuse that they were using? They felt that they had the right to know about the details of Archie's birth because royals are funded by the British taxpayer. Remember when Harry and Meghan wanted to keep Archie's christening private? Remember that? Remember that? And 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 those Haters, they went fool. They went batshit crazy. Remember that? And remember when they wanted to keep the names of little Archie's godparents private? And people were like, ah, they can't do that. We have the right to know. We have the right to know who the godparents are. We have the right to be a part of little Archie's christening. Harry and Meghan, they're wrong. They're wrong. That baby is ours. Remember that? I mean, people were literally saying that a royal baby didn't have the right to privacy. (laughs) I even remember when people were crying foul when Harry and Meghan wouldn't tell nobody the names of their damn dogs. Remember that? (laughs) Oh, But when it comes to Prince William, Prince William, you know that guy, the guy that had COVID-19 way back in April and didn't tell nobody, right? That guy, you know, he, he, he had the right to his own privacy about his health. You know, that, that's just, That's hypocrisy at its finest. Almost makes you want to throw up, 
right? I mean, doesn't it? <laughs> Megan's world, Megan's world, Megan's world. Let's have a conversation, okay? Do we really believe that William had the COVID-19? Do we really believe that? I'm just putting it out there. Do we really believe that? I mean, he, he might have had it. Why was this information revealed six months later? Why? You know, I'm sorry, but something, something in the air, you know, it just don't smell right. It's, it's funky. It smells funky. It smells old. It smells spoiled. It smells rotten. Okay. No neck. No neck Jobson. Royal Roden. No neck Jobson. He called this a cover up. He called Prince Harry a liar with his whole chest and two stomachs and four chins. He called Prince William a liar. But you know, let's 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 really get deep about this. Okay. I'm like is this a pre cover up to hide a real cover up? Let me repeat that one more again. This COVID 19 story about Prince William, six months later, being revealed. Is this a pre cover up to hide? The real cover-up? True or untrue? I got a feeling something happened that William really doesn't want us to know or there's something that's going on that William really doesn't want us to know. And he is using the COVID-19 story as a shield. Okay, he's using it as a shield. Bam! I'm going to drop this story out here in the atmosphere to hide the real cover-up, to hide the real scandal. Okay? He's buying time, people. He's buying time. Okay? He wants people to feel sorry for him that he suffered from the COVID-19 and he had difficulties breathing. But he soldiered on. He soldiered on and continued his royal duties. Because Prince William is that guy. He is that honorable, dutiful guy. Loving father of three and husband. He didn't want to worry the nation. He didn't want to worry the British people. Okay? So when the real cover-up drops, right, they'll refer back to this pre-cover-up. Okay? That's how I feel. That's what I think. Megan's world, let me know what you think. All right, because it's just really interesting to me, okay, that on April 17th, Will's, you know, he's sitting right next to his wife, Kate, <laughs> doing a Zoom meeting, whatever the hell they were doing. And then, you know, you got his, you got his supporters saying, well, maybe he didn't know that he was diagnosed then. Bullshit. And again, he was out there with his kids delivering food parcels to the elderly in April. And April is the month that he was diagnosed with the COVID-19. Spreading that mess all over the damn place. Putting all those people at risk. But Prince William, he's honorable. He is dutiful. He can no longer put his arm 
around his brother no more. That's what they want you guys to remember. When the real cover up comes out. Okay? It's just interesting to me, right? Interesting to me that this guy had the COVID-19 and some reports say that he really struggled. Some reports are saying that he had difficulties breathing, but no one thought that Prince William should go to the hospital. No one thought that they should err on the side of caution to have him checked out in the hospital. Interesting. Things that make you say, hmm. I mean, come on, Queen Elizabeth. I'm talking fast. I'm talking fast. You know, when I get riled up, I start talking fast. (laughs) But Queen Elizabeth, she's old. All right. All hail to the queen. But she's old. She's 94 years old. Prince Charles, he's in his 70s, and he had recently suffered from the COVID-19 himself. So one would think, one would think, all those royal staff, all the royal advisors, all the bitch-ass men in gray suits, one would think that somebody within those quarters in Buckingham Palace would think that it would be in the second heir to the throne's best interest, not only for himself, but for the royal family and for the institution to go to the hospital to make sure that he's okay when he had issues breathing. Okay, right? Am I overthinking this too much? Am I overanalyzing this too much? I don't think so. Because something in the air just don't smell right. It's too funky, y'all. It's too funky. It's spoiled. It's rotten. It's rotten. It's hypocrisy at its finest. It really, really is. Think about it. Think about it. Imagine, imagine if Prince Harry was diagnosed with COVID-19 way back in April and six months later he drops this news out into the atmosphere we all know we all know they would accuse Prince Harry of a cover up or they would say that it's a PR stunt It's not true. And we know, we know, we know, we know. Make its world, we know that they will blame it all on Meghan Markle. They would say it's her fault. She gave Prince Harry (laughs) COVID-19. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, you really honestly can't. But um, no neck. No neck Jopeson. What you need to do, and I'm serious. I am so serious when I say that. What you need to do is stop whining and take your two chin full stomach, ass, into the journalism room and do some damn research. Become a real journalist. Do some damn research and find out what the real cover-up scandal is. 
Because like you said, it's a cover-up. It's a cover-up. Prince William, he lying. He lying. He lying, y'all. He lying. Megan's World. Now we are going to talk about Prince Charles. Okay. Daddy Charles, you know, he did an interview with British Vogue magazine. Yes, yes, yes. And our blackface friend, Edward Inningful, interviewed him. Yeah, that guy. During this interview, Prince Charles talks about his lifelong commitment to sustainable fashion and how the clothes textile industry should make clothes that are more environmentally friendly. You know, Special K can rock with that. He also revealed... (laughs) He also revealed... The suit he wore to Harry and Meghan's wedding, he has had since 1984. 1984. Shit. I mean, come on. Did I misinterpret that wrong? I mean, I don't mean to be rude. But, you know, Prince Charles, he looks a little thicker. You know, here in 2020 than he did in 1984. Okay? I mean, it's like, come on. Come on. You know, Prince Charles, he don't have no cell phone. And now he wearing suits that he has had since 1984. Oh, boy. All right. Look at this picture. Look at this guy. He looking like a pathetic moo-moo standing in a beautiful flower garden. Okay? Now, look. You know, you know, I know Prince Charles is Prince Harry's dad. I mean, I get it. But, you know, I'm disappointed. And Prince Charles. I really am. I can't believe he would do an interview with British Vogue magazine about sustainable fashion that would help improve climate change. I bet Queen Elizabeth believes that that is the most idiotic thing Prince Charles can do. Royals do not guest edit British Vogue magazine. Royals don't do interviews with British Vogue magazine. That is what celebrities do. Isn't that right, Danny Boy, Boo Boo, Wooten? Like, oh my God, Prince Charles doing an interview with British Vogue magazine talking about climate change, it's It's too marginal. It's too woke. It's too radical. Not everybody believes in climate change, and it may alienate some conservative British citizens. Isn't that right, William? William, have you had a talk with your father about him doing this interview with British Vogue magazine talking about climate change and talking about sustainable fashion. William, I'm going to need you to seriously have a word with your father because he can't be out here doing interviews with British Vogue magazine about climate change and sustainable fashion. No, he can't be doing that. It's too woke. It's too marginal. It's too radical 
for the institution, right? Didn't Robert Lacey, another rural rodent, say that Megan working with British Vogue magazine was a mess? It was a mess. It was a mess. Megan guest editing on British Vogue magazine. It was a mess. It was a mess. The queen, according to Danny boy Boo Boo Wooten, thought it was the most idiotic thing that Megan could do. So what does the queen think about Prince Charles doing an interview with British Vogue magazine? And, you know, speaking of your boy, <laughs> your boy, Danny boy, Boo Boo Wooten, right? Did you guys see the epic temper tantrum that he had <laughs> on the Lorraine show about Megan being the guest editor for British Vogue magazine when she did the special edition of uh, the forces of change. Did anybody see that? You know, I saw it on YouTube, but did, did anybody out there in Megan's world see that? This dude, I mean, he had an epic temper tantrum on TV about Megan being a guest editor for British Vogue magazine. Epic. Temper tantrum. I mean, it was so epic that the lady that was interviewing him almost busted out laughing in his face. Let's listen to this epic meltdown by this grown ass man. The queen thinks about it. if you're stepping into the political world, the queen we know and always... think this is an absolutely idiotic, ridiculous decision, as do I. Sounds <laughs> and great for him this morning, as I he's just. Full of, full of anger. <laughs> it's an interesting one that will absolutely get a lot of people. But a lot of people will laugh. Remember this, Megan doesn't too. want to be a celebrity, Christine. She says she wants to be a royal. Royals don't guest edit magazines. Celebrities guest edit magazines. Do you get me? Yes, you see the point that I make here? Point, this is a magazine that people shell out loads of money for to be told to buy clothes that cost about £10,000, like a pair of shoes for ten thousand pounds then you've got megan banging on about underprivileged people oh, honestly have you seen vogue honestly i mean i don't i, I haven't it's not seen my cup of tea, but if you go through vogue probably the cheapest item of clothing you've got in there is a thousand pounds well i can't afford that and yeah. i'm sure most people in the country can't die okay. so danny boy boo boo wooten are you going to give that same energy to prince charles no, you're not, because you're a hypocritical, pug-faced bitch. That's what you are, Danny boy. Prince Charles and Meghan, you know, they basically did the same damn thing with British Vogue magazine. They both did interviews about woke, left-leaning topics. That's what they both did. Megan, you know, it wasn't an interview. It was more so she was the guest editor. However, they felt that the subject matter was too marginal. It was too radical. Wasn't enough white people on the cover. Okay. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that rural rodents like Danny, boy, boo-boo, Wooten and Robert Lacey and that racist camel toe, uh, what's her last name? Tomini? Whatever. They will either praise Prince Charles or they will say nothing at all. Well, you know, Special K has something to say. And this is what Special K has to say. All of them can pick a damn finger.
That's what they can do. All right, Megan's World. We have come to the end of the episode. Before we go, I did want to briefly discuss the launch of Archwell. For those of you who have not signed up on the website, please go ahead and sign up. Haters beware. Haters beware. Megan and Harry, they're not playing. (laughs) They are not playing. Okay. You better read that fine print. (laughs) All right. Special K is looking forward to the great things that Archwell is going to do. All right. Now, America, 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 my Americans, my fellow beautiful American people, stay strong. Hang in there. This too shall pass. Okay? It's Friday. Get you some wine. Maybe a little Henny and Coke. Or maybe you drink Henny straight. (laughs) Get you some Patron. Whatever your choice of adult beverage is. It could be water. It could be tea. Whatever it is, get you a nice tall glass. Get you some good food and just relax. Take a moment to debrief. There's a lot going on in this country right now. Got a lot of fools out there trying to intimidate people with their little flags, their little Trump flags. (laughs) It's a mess. It's a hot mess out there in some areas. In America. But again, this too shall pass. Stay safe. Hug up and love up on your loved ones. And just remember, we are living in historic times, America. We are living in historic times. All right, Megan's World. I love you guys and I appreciate each and every one of you. Before we go. There were some countries that I did miss during the first live webcam episode. So I do want to give a shout out to those countries that I missed. Brussels. I see you guys were in the house. France. I am so sorry. I missed you. France. South Africa. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A big shout out to South Africa. That is a large listening audience. Dominica, I see you. Puerto Rico, I see you. Australia, Canada, big shout out to Germany. Germany was in the house that day. Hong Kong was in the house that day. Puerto Rico was in the house that day. I'm pretty sure (laughs) there's some other countries that I'm missing. Uh Uh-oh, Barbados. Thank you for the sign. Barbados was in the house. Okay, St. Lucia was in the house during the first live webcam episode. So, again, Megan's World, I appreciate you guys for listening. And again, Americans, Americans, this too shall pass. All right, Megan's World, you guys stay safe. I am your host, Special K Thoughts, a.k.a. Special K. And I'm out.